Hello and welcome back to another 3D printer video review. Today we're going to be talking about the Lulzbot Taz 6. It's been a little while since I've made a video on it, but that does not mean it's not fresh on my mind and, and, and I use it every single day. So it's something I, I just want to talk about and give you guys a little update as to what's going on with it. Basically, if you've been paying attention to the channel, you'll notice I've been doing updates with the Anet A8 as well as the CR10, the Creality, over there. Uh, they have been great printers for me, but that does not mean that I don't still love the Lulzbot Taz 6 and use it every day. It has its, uh, its merits, and I, I would like to talk about them real quick. So in case you're wondering, I do intend on adding a Raspberry Pi to the Lulzbot Taz 6, as well as some LED lights. That way I can get it lit up so that when I create my time lapses, it's just going to look really, really nice. I like having the ability to remotely access my printers as well as automatically capture time lapses. It makes it really good when you're creating content or especially if you want to see when a print, you know, when, when something went wrong, you can go watch the time lapse and see exactly when something started to go wrong and that really helps you learn and, and avoid, avoid future mistakes. So my favorite thing I'm going to say real quick that I've ever printed with the Lulzbot Taz 6 has to be uh, the gear heart just simply because it's it's you know the, the gear heart's awesome i actually printed this with the more extruder believe it or not so the more extruder printed this and it was still plenty accurate enough to, to work just well uh so this thing is one of my favorite 3d printed items in case you guys are asking what's my favorite 3d printed thing this is one of them by far one of them uh of course the spinners were all but the craze very recently so i made myself the tri spinner right which is a uh, three five spinners in a row and it's probably the coolest thing that ever existed if you wanted just a single one like this it looks like that guy this was also printed of course on the Lulzbot Taz 6 and you can just kind of see the quality on these guys is, is all really really nice this is probably uh, I've, I've had a lot of friends play with this spinner and they say it's the best spinner in the world yeah totally anyways the reason I was talking about spinners is because Lulzbot actually came out with an STL file uh, an actual spinner that you can download without adding any bearings or anything like that. You can simply just take the actual Lulzbot spinner and just hit it just like that. It just it just works. It just works. It just you print it, you pull it off the bed, and it works. That thing is it's so freaking awesome. So uh, I really think this is one of the coolest things. Having a Lulzbot self-printed spinner in the time of the craze, this was uh, was was very cool. So if you want to go ahead and look in the description, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the the STL file for that. Pretty much any printer can print this guy. So go ahead and do that. So basically for the past several months I've been using this printer non-stop to not only print prototypes but as well as actual VR accessories for the Pro VR Gear store. What I enjoy most about that is the fact that it really allowed me to learn a lot about the printer very very quickly and that has just helped me a lot when it comes to opening these new printers and getting to know how these other printers work as well. Now I know some people are going to talk about the price point of the Lulzbot Taz 6 considering that it's a lot more money than these other printers that you can you know buy for $150 or even you know $400. Uh, the thing is I can say from my opinion uh, that it's worth its price. It is definitely worth its price. I say that not only because of the support that it has, because of the attachments that you can get for it, but most mostly just because of the overall general quality of the machine. The Lulzbot Taz 6 is something that you can pull out of the box, set up, and start printing right away, whether, you, whether or not you know really anything about 3D printing at all. And you can start printing day one within 10-15 within minutes, and from there it's just going to go. And of course you're going to have to learn things, but it, it's, just, it's, it's really a get, get and go procedure. Uh, these other printers have a lot more love that goes into them. That being said, if you know a lot about 3D printers and you're a 3D printing guru, you know, and you're trying to open up a workshop, sure, it might not be feasible to buy several of those other machines, but for the average person, for the average business out there, I, I do believe these Lulzbot TAS machines uh, have a lot more value given the fact that they are just kind of indestructible and they work. Their auto-leveling system is just hands down better than anything else I've seen on these other systems as well. So, uh, in my opinion, after using these other ones, I still really love the Lulzbot. I think it's worth its price. I still love my other little printers as well. Anyway, I'm going to show you some of the vases that I printed with the Lulzbot uh, Taz 6. And uh, these were just really, really cool. Uh, these little guys, I was printing a bunch of these little guys to give away. Um, I had put little things inside of them. And these print in 15 minutes. So with the Lulzbot Taz 6, I could print these little vases in 15 minutes. And just because I wanted to test out some of the build volume, I jumped into SketchUp, created a basic shape, mirrored it, and then twisted it, and then I printed it out in the spiral mode. That took less than an hour, so this is about well, 55 minutes right there in the Lulzbot Taz 6, 55 minutes, not bad. And the super cool blue plastic, I printed myself a couple different vases, and these ones turned out pretty nicely. 
These vases are super cool, and each of them printed in less than four hours. Check that out. Yeah. Freaking sweet. Freaking sweet. Okay, and since I'm showing off those, I do want to show off some of the, the other prints that I've got on the other printers. For example, the Creality CR10, I printed this vase with it, and uh, as you can see, it is uh, you know, a nice size. Considering this right here is very similar size, I printed this one in an hour, I printed this one over here in seven hours. So, seven hours, one hour, seven hours, one hour. The Anet A8 does not have as much build volume, but I did manage to get myself one of those printed as well. Um, and you can see, so the quality on all the printers, you know, is going to be really, really nice. And, you know, you can see like a glass-like bottom over here, and this one has a nice kind of glass-like bottom. That one has a really nice bottom. All of the printers print really, really nice. The Anet A8 could print the Dragon, as well as Groot, without a problem at all, and the quality looks great. The CR10 can print Groot, and the Dragon, just great. Groot? Other Groot. Oh. The CR10 can print Einstein. The Anet A8 can print Einstein. The A8 can print the boat. The CR10 can print the boat. So it's become painfully obvious to me that pretty much all 3D printers are very, very capable of doing very similar things. Basically, if you get a $150 printer and you fine tune it, it can print great quality things. If you get a $400 printer and you fine tune it, it can print great quality things. If you get a $2,500 printer and you fine tune it, you can do great things with it. The big difference comes with ease of use and of course how it pops out of the package. The more expensive one comes out of the package not only with incredible ease of use, with a very robust build, uh, but also with software and the team to support it. You've also got accessories that go specifically for it, and not only that, it just never fails. And I can pretty much leave it on all the time without ever, ever worrying about it, and it always works. Can you say that for your printer? I don't know. If you can, it's worth it, right? So because of all those things, I think the TAS-6 really stands on its own. These other printers are wonderful and great. Uh, at the same time, that's not what we're talking about really when you talk about what you're buying a 3D printer for. Almost every 3D printer can print the same types of things, except for when you're talking about then ABS or then flexible filament and all that. But even so, you can do add-ons over here, uh, whether you want to do it expensive or cheap, and it's just got a lot of capabilities. So anyways, I hope you guys found this uh, review somewhat informative. I'm going to go ahead and get back to doing some more 3D printing today so I can find out some more information about flexible filament over here on the CR10. All right, that's it for today. I am gonna go ahead and end the video, but look forward in the future for a CR10 video, whereas I'm going to be checking out the flexible filament on there. Uh, not only that, I'm going to be replacing my Lulzbot TAS-6 with the Morse Struder again and printing some very, very large items with that. So we should have some fun right there. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please let me know. And of course, uh, if you do want to help support the page, there's many ways you can do that by leaving a like, just a positive comment, or of course the Patreon's there as well. Uh, I really appreciate you guys checking this video out. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.